Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be doing a Misty vs. Coney comparison. Uh, this is going to be brief, so if you're planning on buying any of these, do your own research, not financial advice. Also, before we get into the video, make sure you sub and like. So, to start off, this is crazy, guys. This is just one month performance now. Since Misty has only been out for about a month, uh, they are up 100 five percent coney in that same time period 41 percent and the most interesting is ibit which is just a bitcoin etf they're up 36 percent so misty is three times outperforming bitcoin and coney is even outperforming bitcoin too which is pretty interesting but if you also look at the all-time performance for coney they are still beating misty as you can see misty is up 105 percent in one month but all time Kony is up 132%. So let's look at the option chains for both of these and we'll see which one is paying the better premiums at the moment. All right, so there is gonna be a little bit more time value on this just because I'm recording this during the week. But if we go one week out, uh, the IV on Coinbase right now is 78.6%. So we're gonna do a 10% out of the money call on this one. Uh, at the 310 mark since coin is at about $280 and uh, that premium rate there will yield us 2.88% for the week obviously they usually sell their calls on Thursdays so that will be lower sometimes but yeah 2.88% so let's just check what Misty has now so going for the April 5th ones again IV is is it double there it's pretty much double yeah so if we go 10% out of the money, since MicroStrategy is at 1875 or something right now, we go to the 2060 calls right here. I took the midpoint just because the spreads are so far there and the, the ask is a bit higher on the lower call. So I put it up 125 premium, gets us a 6% yield on our cash, which that is a big difference, guys. It's about double, but you can expect that because of the IV. And also one important thing to note too is Jay said, like the fund manager, he said, if you look at that IV there, that's kind of like the dividend they aim for. So early prediction could say, you know, without checking all the trade and stuff, you could probably assume a 150% dividend uh, if the IV stays that way for the continuing weeks. And then for Coinbase or Coney, 78.6 percent let's go check out what these companies are all about and why or how they are so different before we look at the financials i just wanted to point this out because i've been tracking them for about eight weeks now five weeks for misty this is some interesting stats about them so their average call cap for the week usually for misty is 15.22 percent so that means on any given week we most likely will be able to run 15%. And then for Kony, it is 10% uh, there. And then as you can see, the average premium collected usually is about double too. Annualized, like I said, this can be like the IV. Uh, it's basically half again. But I think in the past couple months, the IVs has been going down. That's why in those pictures we just saw there, the IV was like 150 and 76, but annualized here on the premium collected, it's 184% and 90%. So taking it, that into consideration, we can see Misty usually has more room for capital appreciation, plus has a larger dividend. So I know we all buy this for the income. That's the main reason, but it's also important to look at the company behind it. Because, yeah, we're still in premium on the company. We're, we're selling calls on the company. But if that company tanks and is terrible, then we're losing losing out on the NAV. And then that causes our distributions to go down. So it's very important to make sure you know about what Coinbase is all about. And I'm sure most of you guys know crypto. It's one of the, the main crypto exchanges. It's actually the first exchange where I ever bought a Bitcoin. I didn't buy a full Bitcoin. I bought like $5 worth when I was 15 years old but anyways whenever crypto volumes go up like they have been uh they make money 
And it's also very important to note this institutional number is also going to be going up way more too. And they, crypto or Coinbase, is also the custodian for a lot of those big Bitcoin ETFs. So they're going to be making some money off that too. But yeah, the, the volume has been rising steadily. And guys, I know we all know about crypto. It's not as mainstream uh, or in the media as much as it was in, say, 2021. I think we're still in the early phases of it, of this bull run, just because it's not getting the extreme amount of hype and FOMO like we saw in 2021. So they are decreasing their expenses. Uh, you know, their, their, their expenses here uh, in their full year. I want to look at the full year. This is where I put the check marks. So you want to look at 2022 to 2023 for technology and development down by a lot. GNA down by a lot. Crypto asset impairment because they own uh, crypto and say the value goes down on that crypto, they will get an impairment charge, but that also turned into a gain. Restructuring charges just because they're laying off so many people that went up. Uh, other operating expenses that aren't listed there also down. So overall, expenses are down quite a bit for the company this year. They're still really high though, $3.2 billion off uh we'll see the revenues next year so here's the revenues here we want to look at year ended but i also want to note here look at that growth between the three months ended between 2022 and 2023 growing quite good it, this is a growth company guys because as crypto becomes part of our daily lives uh people are gonna have to be buying bitcoin and they're gonna be buying it off the exchange but here Right now, I'm not going to lie, this is pretty concerning. Total revenue, $3.1 billion. Operating expenses right here, $3.2 billion. So as of right now, this company is operating at a loss. However, if we get a crazy bull run again, and it starts becoming mainstream, everyone starts flooding the Coinbase again, those revenues will go up. And I'll, I'll take a look at the 2021 numbers. So this is what they made when they IPO'd in 2021. $3.62 billion off basically double the revenue that we had in 2023. So you could tell this company is very dependent on how well crypto is doing. If crypto, everyone's trying to get in it, they're, they're going to make a lot of money. Like $3.62 billion, you throw like a 30 multiple on that, share price is easily 553 However, as you can see there, 2023, you know, crypto, uh, it was it kind of started going up towards the end of the year, but n not much going on for 2023 for Bitcoin and stuff. But if you looked at 2021, when it was all over the news, everyone wanted crypto, they were making loads of money. Like those margins are really good too. Uh, however, I do suspect a lot of this could also be because they own crypto and their assets are gaining value as well but i do want to be totally fair when i'm judging coinbase's balance sheet because you know they're a tech company and they have a lot of non-cash expenses so i want to look at the cash flows and they aren't technically losing money so if you look at the year ended they made 922 million dollars off of their operating activities which is good and you might ask why is the net income like uh so small in comparison it's because um they have so much i mean so much stock-based compensation yes that 780 million number is purely stock-based compensation so that gets counted as a loss when you translate that into net income and I, you can totally see why because what do you think those employees are going to do with their coinbase shares you think most of them are going to hold them or are they going to sell them for cash and it dilutes the shareholder base so that is something to look at it's getting better because in 2022 that number was 1.5 billion which is super high so it is getting lower but 780 million dollars is still a lot to consider 
So what do I think of Coinbase? I think currently at a $67 billion market cap off $9 million in net income, or even if you take in that operating cash flow, definitely is overvalued in my opinion. But if it gets to those 2020, 2021 numbers, it could actually look like a really good deal at this price. So I do own some Coney. I think it's great to play the volatility of it, sell calls to people that want those calls. Uh, and if we get back to those 2021 numbers, you know, it'll be really good for Coney. So now we're looking at micro strategy here and just a brief look at it. Their 2023 revenue was 496 million. Their non gap operating income, not even gap uh, is negative 45 million. I can only think what their gap one would be. So they're they're not making money, but they are that that's a decent chunk of revenue, and they aim for seventy to ninety million for twenty twenty four. Now this is a, like a IT type of company. Usually these companies get low multiples, so you can say you know maybe slap a ten multiple on seventy million. That company should be worth seven hundred million. But let's see how much they're worth. They're worth thirty one billion. So the reason why they're worth $31 billion is basically because people aren't buying this company because of their IT company. They're buying it because this company buys Bitcoin all the time. And uh, is there a news article here? Anyways, I was, I was trying to find a news article. They offer debt all the time to buy even more Bitcoin. So let's check out how much Bitcoin they have and how much that Bitcoin is worth. So this is really cool here. You can see they're growing their Bitcoins massively as time goes on just by offering more debt. And guys, when they're offering this debt, it's convertible convertible debt too. So it's at very low rates. However, MicroStrategy can opt to pay it back with shares instead. So you got to keep that in mind because that could be future dilution. But anyways, they have 214,000 Bitcoins right now times it by the price bitcoin is today which is 71,000 we get 15 billion now i was kind of shocked when i saw this number because i saw micro strategy almost worth double this and uh i think the premium comes from the ceo just because he can buy so many bitcoin but still this is why i prefer to buy micro strategy through misty because they can sell covered calls on it because that iv is so high and even when we're going down on the stock we're kind of buffered a bit by that premium so yeah we're getting capped sometimes but i prefer that sort of safety net that that premium has given us and we're collecting those dividends as time goes on but yeah when i saw this number i was i was kind of shocked because micro strategy is worth double and it is kind of scary because that's above their intrinsic value on the flip side though one could argue bitcoin is really cheap and what micro strategy is doing right now is buying bitcoin for you know as cheap as possible and if we get to the 2021 number of a fomo territory we're looking at like 200k there yeah i'm not saying like this rainbow chart has any credibility i just like looking at it but yeah we're still in the accumulate phase for it Plus, we got that having coming up for Bitcoin. So in conclusion, this is what I think. The value is more towards Coinbase just because they have more of that potential to grow their actual business. You're harnessing the growth from crypto, from people buying, and it's a business, you know. You're gaining more revenue as more attention comes from crypto. And they don't just make money off Bitcoin. They make money off other assets and I don't know if NFTs are still a thing. They got NFTs and staking and stuff. Misty is more of a pure Bitcoin volatility play. I think going forward, Misty is, they're going to have the higher dividends. So yeah, the value is not there. That's one thing that was very concerning when I was, you know, doing my research here is how they're trading so far ahead of their actual business value and their Bitcoin value that it is kind of getting more risky for Misty. Oh, that rhymes. I like the I like the sound of that. But 
it's kind of funny I'm calling Coinbase value because right now they're absolutely absolutely not value. But like I said, if they can get back to that 2021 point, maybe lay off some more people, reduce their expenses, it could start looking pretty good. Plus, the dividend on both of these are huge. Misty's just going to consistently be above that 100% mark. Coney, you know, they've been up there before too. And uh, they're both plays on crypto which uh, if you guys are interested, make sure you do your own research. And yeah, because these, these are definitely the most riskiest yield max ETFs just because they're super high in volatility and their value is low. But if you want to play volatility, these definitely can be very interesting ETFs. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. My dividend estimates for these both will be coming out this Saturday or Sunday. We'll see. Thanks for watching.